Today I wanted to do a little bit of follow-up on the point that I discussed yesterday, which was about attachment to things. So I'm going to reference a couple of stories that are in the Bible, which I think are of interest because they actually directly address attachment, although the way I'm going to look at it is a little different than what you might hear the way you might hear it from a pastor or a priest or somebody like that. So the first story is about um, a guy named Jonah who, uh, of course, everybody realizes that he was the guy who supposedly got swallowed up by a fish uh, when he got thrown overboard of a ship. And then the ship, he was in the, the fish for like three days and then it spit him out on the beach. Um, but the main point of the story that actually got him into the fish in the first place was that he did not want to go and do what God had told him to do, which was, the way the story goes, which was to go and preach to the Ninevites. These, these Ninevites were people who basically were what would now be considered, I guess, heathens or um, Gentiles or people who are not godly. And he didn't want to go and preach to them. And so God was telling him to do this. And instead of doing that, he went and jumped on a ship to go somewhere else. And basically trying to escape his, his what his duty was to God based on his being a prophet. And uh, that's what got him in all this trouble. What was interesting is that the reason why he told God later on that he didn't want to preach to the Ninevites was the actual outcome that happened. So after he actually gets spit up on the beach and realizes, okay, I can't escape God. I better go and do what he tells me to do. He goes and preaches to the Ninevites and those guys all decide they're going to repent, turn back from their evil ways, and then God blessed them as a result. And this pissed off Jonah. He was saying, you know, that's why I didn't want to go and preach to him in the first place was because I knew that if I did, that you were going to be gracious because you're such a gracious God and you were going to go and, and bless them and then they were going to, and everything was going to be great for him. So basically he had this, I guess you could, I don't know if you'd call it racist or anyway, he had this hatred for the Ninevites apparently, or for some reason he thought they were not justified in getting God's grace. And he had a certain outcome that he wanted for him. Probably secretly, he was thinking, well, I can't wait for God to go and, you know, bring down fire and brimstone on him or whatever, or somehow, you know, destroy these people, which is what apparently God was talking about doing if they didn't turn from their, their ways. He actually wanted to see that happen. So he was rather vengeful. He had a certain outcome that he was attached to, for those Ninevites, but when he was told to go and do something that would potentially change that outcome, he got very upset about it and tried to escape that responsibility. And eventually, even though, even after he went and did what he was told to do, which is to preach them, and the result was what he figured it would be, which is that they repented. He was very angry about it. He was bitter because of his attachment to this certain outcome that he wanted for the Ninevites, which was for them to be destroyed, okay? And his anger was so intense that he went and he went under a, uh, went and sat, tried to get, in, get some shade from the hot sun. He went and sat under a little, um, bush or branch of a little tree or something. And then this hot sun and a wind scorched the tree and it withered and died. And then he was still having to be subject to the heat and the sun. And he, he was angry and miserable. And God basically told him, well, you know, wh why are you so angry? And he was saying, well, because this tree should have done this and this and that. He's like, isn't it, you know, what, what, what does that have to do with you? What, why is it that, you know, basically was telling him, why does everything have to be the way you think it should be? 
Are you the one who creates things? Are you the one who's the master of the universe? What is it that makes you think that you deserve to have everything your way? So essentially, what God was talking to him about is accepting things the way they are. The way things are is the way things are. So accept them and just go with it. Because being angry about it doesn't change the situation. It only makes you in turn, it only makes you unhealthy. It only hurts you. You're only hurting yourself when you're staying attached to a certain outcome that you want so badly, even though it may not happen. The key is to be okay with whatever the outcome is and just go through with what you need to do or you want to do or whatever and accept the outcome, even if the outcome is totally opposite of what you want. Because being non-outcome dependent, being outcome independent, is the place where you can be happy. You're no longer attached to an outcome. Okay, that was story number one. Story number two has to do with, well, maybe I should save that for tomorrow. I'll do that. I'll save the next story for tomorrow. This one, attachment to outcomes and letting go of those attachments, I think that's good enough for today. See you in the next video.